Welcome everyone, it's Renee with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you education, motivation, and information that's sure to improve and enhance your life. And this episode is sure to do just that. Let's take a listen to today's great segment. Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Hello, everyone. Welcome to I Think with Gospel Artist Tambourine. We are here today to bring you something brand new. Uh, she's an intercessor and she's amazing. Uh, you know, her name is Simeen Walden, and she is going to be joining us shortly. Uh, she's so amazing. Uh, she's a she's a, a prayer warrior. I mean, it, it is just such a pleasure to to meet her, and I know that you guys will feel the same way. So we're going to get her in and get her on the show so that she can share her journey with you guys it's such an amazing journey such an amazing journey I mean this 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 woman right here I tell you she can pray she can pray over me any day and I know that you guys will will feel the same way um, so I am just so elated and so excited uh, to have her on my show today and, uh, and so we are just going to allow her to speak about her, uh, her worship, her experience, and, um, and we are just excited to have her here. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you, Miss Simeen Walden. Oh, how are you? And welcome to the show. I am well. Thank you so much for having me. Oh no, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. So I, you were just introduced to the world. I uh, let them know who you were and, uh, and and what you do. So in your own words, tell us who you are and what you do for God. So my name is Simone Walden. Um, I'm an educator and a speaker, but I just recently became a, a, a spoken word artist, a gospel artist, releasing a. Um, a prayer where I wanted to reach the hearts of people so we can get back into a place of intimacy with God. So that's who I am, essentially. Okay, and, and why did you feel like we had lost that space of intimacy with God? Um, I won't say lost that space. I think that a lot of the older mothers and fathers that we need to be a people of faith kind of died away. And I think that as the new generation goes up, that, you know, a lot of them just didn't take hold to that unless it became something where there was a problem, there was an issue and they needed God, but to really cultivate a prayer life, I think that was necessary, not necessarily established with this generation and the generations that are coming. Okay. All right. So tell the world about Simeen Walden. How did you get started with this wonderful uh, prayer of yours? So, um, probably a couple years ago, um, well, before, probably, probably 10, 15 years ago, I used to watch a lot of prayers online on YouTube um, when I would be going through things, mm -hmm. having hard times, or just when I want to just lift myself, I would Google prayers on YouTube. And so I found, um, he's since deceased now, same as Nathaniel Simmons. I would follow the racists out of Chicago and I would, it would just like get into my spirit and I would literally copy word for word what um, uh, Prophet Nathan Simmons would say. And I would pray those prayers as my own prayers. And okay. it wasn't until, you know, certain things come in your life where you don't have time to go and find and you graduate a prayer from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Pray from your soul about your situation, your mm -hmm. right issue. Yes, yes, yes. That's what kind of uh, got me there. And then when I moved to Maryland, because I'm originally from North Carolina, so when I moved to Maryland, um, I was a part of, I'm still a part of our prayer team. And um, part of that was we would lead prayer in church and we would lead prayer like online. And the prayer that is recorded now that I record is called Exalted. Um, I wrote this probably like three or four years ago and it's all scripture. Um, and so it was just something I would say to remind myself of who God was and how great he was. And that's how it all came to be. Okay. And what church do you attend? 
I, it's called Temple of Praise International Church in Beltsville, Maryland. Okay, all right. So tell us a little bit about you as a person. Um, so I think I would like to say I'm pretty laid back. Um, I have an extensive <laughs> uh, background of being with God, not being with God. Um, grew up in the church, but it was really kind of those things where you just go because your parents tell you to go. My great grandmother actually was the one who was instrumental to put me into um, church. And so then I went off to college and here it is, you know, this little country girl able to go and do what she wanted to do. Um, and then I got involved in a whole bunch of stuff um, involved with women, involved with men. And that went on for a span of time. And it wasn't until I really was like, God, please help me. Uh, and maybe I say probably like 10 years, I've really been trying to really focus and commit myself to living for the Lord. So you felt that being an intercessor would release those 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 strongholds uh, that were upon you that that were not the way of God, right? So so I mean, a lot of people can relate to this story because there's a lot of us who who grew up in the church, but not necessarily we wanted to go to church. You know, we were we were forced to go to church because that's where our parents were going. You know, and and hoping that that would become a part of our daily lives. But eventually, you know, when you are called, when God calls upon you, you can run all you want to. One day he'll, he, he gonna catch up with you. So. so, so he caught up with you. He caught up with you, and uh, and so you. But you had to experience all of that in order to understand that you needed him, right? Yes. Yes. And I think you said something like a lot of times we try to hide and run away as if God doesn't see us wherever we are. And so every deep, dark hole I was in, he knew about it. And prayer was one of those things where it's always been a place for me where it's safe because I can tell God about how I'm feeling right then. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I'm being judged. I don't feel like somebody's looking at me saying, why are you saying this? Like, I can go to him about I can go to him about every single thing okay and so tell us a scripture that even though your your um, your prayer is is filled with with uh, scripture related uh, uh, sayings tell us a scripture that motivated you so originally there was one I had in mind but when I thought about one that is actually inside of the song that really resonates with me is Psalms 103, 2 through 6. And it talks about all of the benefits of God. Mm -hmm. um, uh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. And I think that's like a reminder for us to, it's easy to get caught up in the world and what's going on. But when you start thinking about the benefits of God and what he has saved us from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're grateful. And so it says, I will not forget the benefit of you forgiving all of my iniquities. That means the ones that I told you about, the ones that people know about and the ones that people don't know about. Those are the mm -hmm. ones that he's forgiven me from. And then it mm -hmm. says, I will, not, I will not forget the benefit of you healing all of my diseases. And so so there are things that sometimes we notice going on in our body, things that get out of control and things that, you know, we can either live with and God heals us. Mm -hmm. I will not forget the benefit of redeeming my life from destruction. So many times where, you know, there's things I know I grew up in the Baptist church. So I would hear a lot of the people pray and say, Lord, thank you for protecting me from the seen and unseen dangers. Well, I don't know what the unseen things are. Yeah. I yeah. That he has redeemed me from destruction, whatever that may have been. And then it talks about not forgetting the benefit of crowning me or crowning us with loving kindness and tender mercy. The mm -hmm. Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. So I'm thankful yes. for new mercies every single morning. Yes. Amen. I will not forget the benefit of you satisfying my mouth with good things. The Bible says that you open up your mouth and he will fill it with good things. And I'm a testimony that if yes. I when I open up my mouth and talk about the goodness of God, it's really because he is uh fill me with good things and then it says don't forget the benefit of renewing your youth like an eagle and don't forget the benefit of ex ex executing righteousness and justice for those who are oppressed and so that's one of my favorite scriptures because it really keeps me in a mindset to be thankful and grateful and never forget the benefits of being in God Amen. yes yeah, so remind, remind everyone of the scripture that you're reading from it's Psalms 103 2 through 6 okay all right and so that inspired you to to want to to write this prayer i mean it's an honor to me the joy of thy salvation uphold me with that free spirit lord you are my portion of my inheritance in my cup lord you maintain my lot and the lines are falling for me in pleasant places lord this is a day you've made i will rejoice and be glad in it 
I'm blessed today because I come in the name of the Lord. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of you and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought you, Lord, and you heard me. Thank you for delivering me from all of my fears. I looked unto you and I was lightened. I looked unto you and my face was not ashamed. This servant cried and you, Lord, heard me. I cried unto you, Lord, and you saved me out of all of my troubles. God, you reign over the heathen and you sit up upon your throne of holiness. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and he's a merciful God. Oh, merciful God. <laughs> yes, yes, that he is, that he is. But, you know, so so tell us a little bit more about how you uh, came upon getting this project completed. So um, last year I was kind of in like a, I would say a peculiar situation. Um, I had stepped away from the ministry. I stepped away from my church and I just really do wanted to cultivate a relationship with God for myself again because I was in ministry. And what I realized is that I didn't want to get free from the world and then get bound again in religion and church. And I got so bound up in doing and trying to be what these person and this person wanted me to be. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And I was leading up prayer. I was over our prayer team and I really wasn't having my own prayer life. Only time I was praying is because there was an assignment or someone was calling on me, but I really wanted to get back. So I wasn't doing anything else. And uh, I was really cultivating my own prayer life again. And I had actually reached out to my pastor um, and asked her, could she be my prayer partner? She was my pastor, and then she stepped down, so we have a new pastor. And she's like, I never had a prayer partner, but what does this mean? And I said, well, I feel like the Lord told me to reach out to you, and for 30 days, we pray every single day together. And I told her, I'm not praying for for no position, for no, I'm praying for Simone, the woman. I need to be my own prayer life, and so that's what we did. And one day I was scrolling on our Instagram, and I saw um, Todd Delaney saying that, you know, he was releasing Delaney Land music, if you want to mm -hmm. record something. And I'm thinking, well, I don't sing, so let me see. So I saw for a couple of days, and I even actually told my pastor about it when I said, I think that, you know, I might reach out to this guy about this prayer that, you know, I used to do um, when I was praying in church. She was like, okay, so I reached out to him, I sent him a inbox. He said, if you have questions, the inbox. Him. So I inboxed him, and he was like, well, you know, we're a Christian company. He's like, it's, ne it's not been done with our company before, but yes, we can do it. And so I was the first one to release the intercessory prayer from the name of music. And then since then, of course, other people did it, but that's really how it all came to be. Okay, so a couple of questions came in uh, for you. So what uh give us a definition of what you would define uh an intercessor to be an uh, intercessor is somebody who prays the heart of god the will of god and when i say the heart of god and the will of god is praying his word like i'm all about praying his word like of course i go to him with my own issues and my own troubles mm -hmm. but i also try to go and search out what does the word say about that so whatever i'm going to i try to go and find a scripture to match it up if i can't find it right then i'll go back and look for so someone who can pray the will of God and the intent of God using the word of God as their resource to back up what you're asking for. Okay, and, and as an intercessor, are you interceding uh, for other people? Yeah, so as an intercessor, you absolutely are interceding for other people. And I think one thing about an intercessor is that you're a person who gets answers. Like, you're not just somebody that's talking, but God actually answers the prayers. You see that God is answering these prayers. So you pray for yourself, you pray for other people, and of course, you always work with uh, Thanksgiving uh, at the forefront of whatever you're asking God for. Absolutely, absolutely. So how, so are you, uh, is there a position that you hold as an intercessor in your ministry? Um, so what they consider uh, at our church, they consider HOD the head of the department. So I will be considered the head of the department of the prayer team at my church. Okay, okay. And how often are you involved in that? Um, so uh, we we uh, we have our group that we meet with all the time. So every first, every first, every second and fourth set, um, Friday night, we pray, we pray, we pray at midnight, and then the fourth. Uh, Friday night, we do it via Zoom, and so I lead those, and of course, there are times I lead in church, uh, doing our uh, Sunday morning prayer times, or Friday night prayers, I'll lead, or sometimes I'll do Bible school. So, what we uh, want to uh, understand from you is, when you are praying uh, for other people and interceding for people, how, how does that make you feel, to, to know that they trust you to be able to break through their prayer break through their needs uh to, to get to god for them it's a very humbling position to be in actually yeah. 
me of all people that you want to come to me and ask and it's not even just outside of my position because I never really share what I just shared with you about being an HOD of my department. People just know that I start praying for the academic system, you know, that I pray sometimes online. So as far as my position and title, people don't come to me for that, but it's because they know that I will pray. And so um, it's very humbling for people to even open up and share the deep things that they got going on. It's like, God, I'm coming to you because these people trust me. Answer for them because now your name is on the line. Answer for them. Yes, yes, yes. And so how, how, do, how does it make you feel when when that answer comes and they tell you, you know, Sister Walden or Minister Walden, uh, you know, my God answer my prayers and they come to you humbly thanking you for that. You know, what kind of I mean, I know that has to make you feel so, so good to know that God is using you in that way. It does, it does make me feel good, but it also it reminds me when, it, when the uh, word talks about how your gifts and callings are without repentance. And that even when I don't feel like I'm what we say up to par, he's still mm-hmm. because I'm giving his word back to him and I'm standing in the gap for somebody else. So it makes me very grateful, it makes me very humble, and it does make you feel good and like, God, you have answered your daughter, like you really do. Yeah. You really still answer me. So. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think your story really will help a lot of people as well, because as you stated, you, you know, you lived a life where you were with women and men. And so there are some um, some, some spirits out there that that maybe maybe uh, that want to express themselves in a certain way, but they're fearful of how somebody's going to respond to them or, you know, or they're going to church. But then you have uh, you have you do have some people that are judgmental within the church, uh, which is unfortunate. And, and a lot of times they lose a lot of uh, people from wanting to come to church because of that. So it's good to know that you were able to fight through all of those uh, those spirits and still be able to come to God and say, okay, God, I'm ready. Use me as you will. I'm, I'm ready with my exploring, you know, whatever the, the world had to offer, you know, all this carnal living. I'm ready to live spiritually and be your daughter. Uh, you know, how, just tell, I mean, that, that had to be a struggle. So how did you get through that? Help, help the people out here that are, that were, that are in your position and, and don't know how to, how to, to move forward in a positive way. So, um, one thing that, and I think God took me this route because when I first, you know, wanted to really get into the church for myself, I was probably maybe 29, 30. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was very tomboyish going to church and I was around a lot of very, you know, feminine, pretty women. Mm-hmm. And so I met a lot of resistance. I met a lot of looking at you like, you know, don't come over here as if like I was trying to talk to these ladies, but I really was really just trying to find a model Mm -hmm. around where I was to help me get from out of there. And so there were times when I was upset, there was times when I was sad, there was times when I was mad at the church, Mm -hmm. but because I was already low, it was like, I'm not allowing you people, you ladies, you women and men to stop me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm pursuing God. And so I was able to work through some of that stuff because it was like, I'm not really here for you anyway. And mm-hmm. so it, that made it more intentional. That's why I would go find stuff on YouTube. I would look at YouTube videos and I would look at YouTube sermons. So when I couldn't find it at the church or I felt like I wasn't getting it there, mm-hmm. um, I would just go Google sermons and go to Google I prayer. And that's when I was able I to really open name. up my heart and I could tell God, these are the things I needed. And surely, but slowly, but surely he started bringing people in my life that aligned with what I was asking him. So it's like, don't focus on people. The Bible says that some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but I trust in the name of the Lord. And so at some point, the Bible says the arm of flesh will fail you. And so when we realize that man, the most... Um, well to do good hearted people can let you down sometimes I started focusing on God and said send me people that that can help me right now in my situation and so it was hard because you're thinking man you come into the church people say come as you are but when you really show up as you are they looking at you like well, what's wrong with you and this thing here, like okay whatever and then as I grew out of that there was other times I I, I, I felt that opposition you know years after that 
Mm-hmm. But it went mm-hmm. back to my remembrance that I'm here for you, God. Like, I, I'm chasing you. I don't know what's up with these people, but I want to chase you. And what I don't want to do is I thank you because now I don't want to do to those people to other people what they did to me and see and it's amazing because god knew that you were sincere you came to him with a sincere heart and that's why he opened up and and listened to you and allowed those people into your life to be able to help you because he knew that you were sincere okay and you know, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. And that's why I was saying, like, prayer mm-hmm. is one of those things where it's the most non-judgmental things I could do. I can go to God and tell Him anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something you mentioned. You know, you said, "Come as you are," but they look at you like you're crazy. So there, uh, we have a pastor on the show that he, his showcase is going to be coming up, and we talk about that. You know, coming as you are, and some people get that meaning messed up. You know, they think, "Oh, come as you are" means some jeans and a shirt, and you know, we're not talking about the physical. We're talking about the spiritual. Come as you are, just like you said. You know, don't look at me like I'm crazy because I'm living this lifestyle. Help me. I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to get some help. So you have you have some people that will pull you over into the carnal life because you feel like they're more uh, attentive to you than the church people. Okay, because they're not looking at you up and down, and that's one of the things that we have to learn. And I, and that's why I want you to share what you went through because people in in the church need to understand that too that that we cannot push people away that's coming to us for help. Right, right. We have to we have to be open and understanding and listen and try to and, and if you're coachable and if you're approachable then you are seeking it like the, no one was forcing you to go you were seeking it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you were wanting it. So and and I and I applaud you for for going after it like that. Because look at you now. Look at, look, look at what all that drive did for you. And it can do that for others. And I, and I think about, you know, there were times when I would reach out to, you know, different people who they would tell me that they was praying for me or I would just say, can you just pray for me? And I know that when I was not praying for myself, and I, was just, I know that somebody had to have been praying for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a recipient of answer prayer. And so to be able to uplift and encourage somebody to do prayer, that's like, for me, it's like the least I could do. Yes, yes, yes. So, do you play any instruments? <laughs> so I played the trumpet in middle school, but no, I don't play instruments now. No? Okay. So, we're going to play the I Think game. <laughs> so, we're going to go through some scriptures with you, and you have to fill in the blanks. Okay? All right. So, I'm going to read some of the scripture, and you let me know what I'm missing. All right. Okay. I'm reading from Psalm 95, 1 through 6. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make. All right. Ding, ding. She got it. She got it. She got it. Okay. All right. Next one. Okay. Next scripture. Oh, come, let us. And let us before the Lord, our maker. Let us adore the Lord. Oh, come, let us and bow. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. <laughs> either okay, so let us. So we're either doing one or the other. Praise and worship. You got it. Okay, one more. One more. Okay. For he is our God and we are the people of his. Yay! (laughs) So she got it, y'all. She got it. (laughs) All right. Good job. Okay. So is there anything that you want to leave with, with everyone? everyone around the world uh because being an intercessor to me is is serious because this is how we get our blessings y'all so so you know we have to pray and we got to pray hard and i'm telling you this woman can pray oh my goodness this woman can pray you guys need to get her prayer 
uh it is i mean amazing i mean it just it just really just ate through my skin i mean when i was listening to it i just i couldn't do nothing but get up and just just go give me some tissue I, I, I was crying i just i couldn't help it i just broke down i said oh my god it sent me straight into worship so if you are wanting uh to get up in the morning while you're getting ready for work you just need to get that praise out before you get to work or or wherever you're going i'm telling you you need to get exalted you need to get this because this prayer will get you through anything anything it's one of those type of prayers it will get you through anything and i mean that what do you want to leave for the people Yes, well, we thank you for being a vessel for the Lord, and we thank you for, for wanting to do it so uh, due diligently. I mean, this, this is just a blessing. It's, you're going to be a blessing to many people, many people. You know, your life is going to touch someone else's life and they're going to say well if she can get delivered so can i and if she can push forward and seek it so can i and that's what we need we need examples we need good examples good role models in the church today we need people that other people can look at and say i want to talk to her about how she did that wow yeah. and you're and you're one of those people Amen. one of I, those people i, I think one of the things that really has helped me with just thinking on the goodness of God is that I've seen him do so many things. It's like even tonight, my friend called me and I was like, hey, and he was like, you sound as happy as I was when I talked to my mom. Mm -hmm. But we'll such and such passed away. She's our classmate. Mm -hmm. And so give me this day, my day to um, we was just talking. And I was like, well, I'm going to come over here. So mm -hmm. I'm not even where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But I know it's a reason that I was supposed to be here mm -hmm. for him to hear it. And then two, for me to put my eyes on God and say, God, I thank you for another chance. And God, I thank you for another day. Yeah. So many times that things happen and that we just kind of skip around with life and thinking that you know it's time to do or time to say but it's time for all of us to make sure that we get it right because i heard when somebody said this before that you know when i when i die I'm blessed today because it's an I'm upgrade. I get to be with Jesus. My soul will never be not saved. Let me the promotion because the hell is still real. And I think a lot of times as we love and encourage people that we still got to let them know that there's two options and that I choose the, 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 the greater option than the, the less option. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What y'all wanna talk about today? We can talk about music. We can talk about new artists. We can even talk about the Bible. It's up to you. What y'all think? this segment. Join us next time for another great episode. If you would like to find out more about this show and its sponsors, 
visit them on social media. Meanwhile, stay tuned to the Daily Gospel Network for another great segment.